My love of making comics has been with me for a long time. The earliest comic I ever made was when I was about seven years old. Eggman was his name. When I was a kid where I grew up there were only two TV channels. So choices were very limited for kids in regards to TV shows. But every weekday in the afternoon there would be a few cartoons that would come on right before the news. A few of the names were Roger Ramjet, Banana Man, Apple Man, Henry's Cat, Bangers and Mash. They were usually American or British, but they were fun and entertaining. They probably wouldn't live up to the standards of today's animations, but at the time they were all we had. So one afternoon, inspired by these cartoons, my best friend Gavin and I decided to make our own characters and make some short comic book stories with them. All we had at our disposal for supplies and materials at the time were some black pens my dad had swiped from his stationary room at work and notepad paper. No one gave us any direction on how to write a story, script or a synopsis for a comic. We just started putting pen to paper and would draw our comics from scratch. No one taught us about penciling or sketching out thumbnails. I mean, come on, we had no idea penciling was even a thing. We just thought this is how it's done. We would have to live with our mistakes. Although I do remember using a lot of whiteout. My comics were usually with the idea that my character Eggman, who was sort of a superhero type, would be doing something very superhero-y. Defeating an evil villain or saving a group of innocents on a bus from danger. Now why on earth did I choose Eggman as a superhero? I have no idea. Eggman was, uh, was a muscular character with a white costume and cape, a giant E on the chest for egg of course, and his head was the perfect shape of an egg. With the top half being a cracked eggshell with two slits for eyes and the bottom half of the eggshell missing so that it exposed the soft, shiny, hard-boiled white of the egg. Oh, and he had a mouth so he could talk. There was no origin story like you would get with multiple Spider-Man or Batman movies. The character just was. No explanations, no reason why. He was just a man with an egg for a head and an extremely muscular physique. I obviously hadn't thought through the ramifications of having an egg as a head for a superhero. But it did lead to some interesting scenarios. I vaguely remember one villain he went up against threatening to fry him, another situation where a giant hammer tried to smash his egg skull. Come to think of it, a lot of the dangers involved smashing eggs. I don't even remember being that into eating eggs at the time. But something I do realise now was the interesting idea of creating a flawed character and how those flaws create interesting problems for the character. My first thoughts when making the character were the costume, which were a direct byproduct of his name, Eggman. But I never thought about who he actually was, not until I started to make up the stories for him. That's when he became an actual character. Compassionate, heroic, he was muscular because he needed physical strength to protect those he cared about. I don't really remember why he wore a cape though, as they mentioned in The Incredibles, capes could be a liability. By making him a man with an egg for a head, he had a vulnerable side to him, a flaw that could be exploited by his enemies. Yet despite it all, he still would continue to be a hero again and again. Without even knowing it, my seven-year-old self had designed a character that wasn't just a two-dimensional drawing on paper, but an actual person. And I'm not suggesting it was Hemingway I was writing, or as interesting a character as, say, Peter Parker, but he had a bit of depth the more I think about it. Many stories we write often have the invincible hero who can take on mountains of bad guys, or the cool character who always has the best line in the story and has all the best friends, cool outfits and so on. It's really easy to make our main character an idea of what we would like to see or be, to hide behind and protect us so that we can feel comfortable. But by making that flawless character, we can never have any conflict in their life which leads to boring, uninteresting storylines and unemotional stories that don't captivate the reader. Problems come up and are solved in an instant. There is no tension in the story. We don't feel any danger or other uneasy, relatable emotions that make us resonate with the character. And most of all, how are you ever going to have a cliffhanger? So when making a character for your stories, don't just design your character with only their physical appearance in mind. Think about a backstory to your character. Where do they live? Who were their parents? What motivates them? What do they fear? And what are their good and bad qualities? Think about what sort of flaw might they have to their personality. It's something which I think we overlook when designing our characters, especially as artists. We want to make the cool character with the best outfit that catches the attention, 
but we probably never imagined why they would dress like that in the first place. Think about yourself for a moment. Why do you dress the way you do right now? It comes back to your personality, your environment, decisions you've made in the past. Or maybe it's just that you haven't done the laundry today. Think about this for example, if I were to make an immortal, heroic Superman type of character, I might make his ego his flaw and see where that takes him or how it can be used against him. If the character were the popular girl at school, maybe her flaw is that she's deeply insecure and uses her looks and bubbly persona to hide the constant panic and anxiety that goes on in her mind that only the reader knows through her internal monologue. Flawed characters are far more interesting. And it's those flaws that lead to conflict. And it's through conflict that you can have more interesting stories, which always makes your characters more interesting too. So think about the process of developing your character from a personality up, giving them virtues and flaws that flesh them out and make them more than just a two-dimensional drawing. Think of how making those flaws can be used in the story and how they can then create opportunities, problems or conflicts for your character when you make your next webcomic. And that's going to make your stories more interesting and entertaining for you and your readers. If you didn't know already, I am making my own webcomic, Jim Reel Paranormal Investigator. The first short story is going to be about 10 pages in length, and I'll be posting at least one page per week to the website listed in the description below. It's a horror action story set in the 70s with ghouls, goblins, witches and werewolves. A katana-wielding protagonist with an afro. It is horror, but with some of that humour that you'd find in a James Bond film from the 1970s. Think Hellboy meets Sharp. I'll be documenting the process I'll use to develop the comic, so please check it out if you are also thinking of starting your own webcomic or just love to read horror comics. I think that you'll enjoy it.